A lot can happen when an MP decides to go against their party line, when their conscience or their constituents call for something other than the party platform. Now sometimes discipline is subtle, it's a slap on the wrist or some harsh words behind closed doors. But sometimes punishment is public. Most of us recall Carolyn Parrish's ousting from the Liberal Caucus in November 2004. Now while many thought she got the boot because of her damage. hostile views against the Bush nice. administration, Parrish's open long. disappointment for then Prime Minister Paul Martin and statements that she felt no loyalty to the Liberal Party probably sealed the deal. But just how important is party loyalty? Very, as former Liberal MP John Nunziata learned. Mr. Nunziata. Mr. Nunziata. Rebel MP John Nunziata voted against the government, accusing liberals of flip-flopping on their election promise to abolish the GST. And I wish him good luck to be elected as an independent candidate, Mr. Speaker. And Nunziata was re-elected in the 1997 election the lone independent in a house driven by party politics and membership. The fact is there is no team in Ottawa. When you're on the government side, uh, power is concentrated in the hands of uh, half a dozen people, half of whom are unelected. Uh, all the power rests with the, um, uh, the Prime Minister's office and everything else is window dressing. The Liberals aren't the only ones known to throw out those who vote against their party. In June 2007, Bill Casey, a longtime Conservative MP from Nova Scotia, was expelled from caucus when he voted against a government budget, claiming it violated the Atlantic Accord. Now Casey wasn't the first Conservative to be publicly fired, and he certainly won't be the last. The Prime Minister and the party, it was the last straw. Two maverick Alberta Conservative MPs had criticized their government's policies before and gotten away with it. But when David Kilgore and Alec Kindy voted against the goods and services tax yesterday, it was just too much for their colleagues to take. They were unceremoniously kicked out today and will now sit as independents. I think I've now officially been lynched politically. It's the first time in the Canadian history that anybody has been expelled from any political party for voting uh, their conscience, for voting their convictions, and voting their overwhelming constituents' views on the matter. But the consequences of party disloyalty aren't always so obvious. Just ask former Liberal MP and current Senator George Baker. I have the pleasure uh, to present to the House uh, the first report from the Standing Committee on Fisheries and oceans, a most excellent report, Mr. Speaker. And what we did in the report was we condemned uh, every government that's ever been in power since, oh, I don't know, uh, uh, 1970, 1965. And we said that they've done an absolutely disastrous job uh, of management of the fishery. Practically every stock we've got is disappearing, mismanagement. This uh, is not a natural disaster that's happened. This is a catastrophe made by man. We know the Fisheries Committee chairman has been removed from not only his chairman, but from the entire committee. So I ask, Mr. Speaker, is it the policy of this government to fire every single person who gets in their way? The Honourable Member for King's Hands. George Baker tried to tell Canadians the truth about their fishery, and he was fired. Now, George Baker... Some people say that then I was removed as the chairman of the committee. What happened was the normal procedure kicked in of committees and chairpersons being reappointed with each new session within that parliament. And while this type of removal may be an accepted practice, a quick scan at today's committee membership reveals that it is certainly not the norm. It's kind of throughout the whole piece, this dominant role of the political party, it really controlling the agenda, which means necessarily controlling the individuals who make up the party and who are the elected representatives under that party's name and label, but elected representatives of the people, right? It crystallizes in the House of Commons when you see that this party discipline uh, forces uh, individuals to vote against the conscience, to vote against uh, positions that they've taken publicly, sometimes to vote on positions that the government itself has reversed its own policy about. And, and everybody will argue the case that, fine, uh, we do have to have the parties make the system work. 
But what we also need is integrity in public life. Almost ironically, it is often the MPs who put their constituents first, at the expense of their party, that face the harshest of consequences.